Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. Hey, we're down here at the dry cow lot. We're gonna do some maintenance on these free stalls. And then I'm gonna try to get up to the main farm and I'll be refeeding them. I'm gonna give you an update on how much feed we got left in the silos, especially, particularly corn silage. These were put in with some little chintzy clamps and I've got some bigger clamps so we got an auction. I got Lance here home from college. He's back, he's ready. Last year we did some work in there. I'll show you that and see how it's held up. But this top bar got all jacked up and I already cut some of them off. I'm just cutting them off and replacing them with a bigger clamp, half inch bolts. And uh, these are smaller stalls for, free, for, the, for the heifers, the bread heifers. So that's what we're doing. Let's go. From this point forward, guys, the audio uh, quit on the camera. I've since had to upgrade uh, filming equipment, but I do apologize. So I'm going to do a voiceover from here on out. Tighten up the clamps on this stall, and you have to make that that last bolt won't barely fit. So we're trying to just put a couple threads on there, see if she'll hit. And this is Lance and I got a kick out of this. Is she going to go or will she strip? And she went. Yeah, the cows there. They're quite curious on what we're doing, but this is a pretty big improvement because these stalls were all flopped out. Cows were laying in them sideways, and and uh, they just needed some heavier clamps that we had gotten at an auction and heavier bolts. Backing up the gator with the torches because we had already done about five or six of them. Lance and Lonnie, those two are brothers. Uh, it'll be my sister's sons. They're they're helping. They get along pretty good. Torch went out right there and I lit it right back up on a, on a hot amber. They got a kick out of that. But yeah, I was cutting instead of trying to unbolt them with a wrench or a ratchet, or I just cut them old bolts. I was cutting three of them, and then uh, they'd just hammer them and pry them off. And uh, I would go along down, and then they would just. Get the clamps set. Those are the clamps I got from auction up north there, Jerry Varner's farm. Uh, I wanted to show you because Lance and I did some work in here, and that's a that's an old hip roof barn. Used to milk in there. There was a bunch of floors in there, uh, lofts. Here's this old hip roof barn. They actually used to milk in this. This is a stanchion barn, but we we ended up gutting all the lofts out in it and then we tried to tie it together as best as possible so it didn't fall down but we poured curbs in here these are some bigger freestalls in here for the cows me and lance last year i was saying yeah it, that was a complete disaster uh cut out again it, and those those were all wrecked uh we completely gutted them out and um and we resecured them he comes home every spring break he's in kalamazoo college playing football but you, you just got to maintain them. We, we poured them curves. It was just an idea we come up with on our own. Uh, make that like a loafing area. Very high ceilings, obviously, in that barn. So great ventilation. And it, it just turned out pretty good. Open barnyard concept. But the dry cows, they do well down here. And there's a friendly heifer. And away we go. We I think we had 10, 10 done at that time. The two brothers were were putting in the hardware, and I'm going to turn this around. We're going down to the last section. These cattle, I tell you, when them heifers they come in up to the main farm, this is where they come from, and they we have a do a good job. My brother and Lonnie primarily break them in in the morning to milk, and because of we're around them so much, they are pretty friendly. Yeah, see that that's that's all slopped out. Those need to be cut off. They come right back up. They're curious, curious animals. And I just start touch, cut, torching, torching the cow right up there by the by the gator. But yeah, it works out pretty good. That curb was put in, I think, back in 2010. That's a big, long lean-to that you're looking at. Um, Dad ended up putting that in, and uh, we just had the idea that they needed um, free stalls. But yeah, there's that little red bull down there. There's two bulls down there, and uh, we feed out of that silo, dump them in these in these bunks, and there's an ag bag down there. The ag bag's about done. We usually want to empty it by spring, but we just dump it in, dump their mineral on top, and they they 
they actually do pretty well. They're tough cows down here with it being an open barnyard. And then we feed them first cutting dry hay, and uh, it, it, it works. What can I say? It, it's We've been doing it this way a long time. It's a mile from the farm, but with the buildings and the well and uh, the silo working down there, there's two nice dry cows right there. Dry cows and, and heifers are mixed in down here. And then Mark will come in there and he'll he'll scrape this up with a bucket or either a tire scraper. Pilots there along them blocks. And then we back to spread her in and, and haul it out. And away they go. Yep, there's a straight line. It's a split pipe right there welded. But we've got, I mean, there's like 25 right there, completely secured and fresh. Those stalls need a little bit of sand. And they just work well. Uh, you see the, the the space thing we're talking about here on them poles. You know, when Dad, they, they built that. Those are old telephone poles, treated. You used to be able to get, get a bunch of them when they would replace them. They'd get them for free. Well, you see, they got a bunch of them. And they spaced them a little wider than four foot, which is fine. And so we went in after the fact, you know, probably 15, 20 years after they built this. And that's when we put these in. Um, my brother and I, we helped do that. That was one of our first projects back in 10. And we're rolling up the torches and the boys are finishing up with the last remaining stalls. We got to get out of here. Look, at, she's there's the box that the bolts I bought new. New bolts for the clamps or the carriage bolts. There's that one of the other bolts down there, a little short, stocky guy, and she's trying to dig right in there. Yeah, she'll be a friendly one. If you can touch their face uh, when they're a heifer like that, then, then they're they're very they're going to be very friendly. There's that other red bull, red and white. I wanted to come back in this in this barn there's a couple stalls when we were in there i felt that they were loose sometimes them bolts you'll have to they'll settle from the cows laying in there you just with them carriage uh lock nuts half inch carriage bolts i think they're about an inch and a half long maybe two inch and you just you just tighten them up with that impact and this one needs it a, a little bit not too bad And then the girls are in there by the water tank. Another set of free stalls just watching, checking out what's going on. Guys, we're job well done. Dry cow right there, clean. This eye apparently is out in this yard light. That's a brand new That's eye brand in new. there. We were talking about it. Just put that light up because you got you want to keep lights up uh, down there, uh, especially for at night if they ever were to get out. You know, but I was saying that 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 only lasted a couple months. So some of this stuff that you buy nowadays just do not last. And there's Big Greg talking with the two nephews. I'm throwing the old clamps in the scrap bucket. They're figuring out how they're going to get them off of there. They're trying to they're they're kind of hooping it up there. Yep, scrap, scrap, and down they go. Three man lift. And they'll be good to go. And there's the dog. And I see an Amazon truck. How about that? Back up here at the main farm, running some feed out. I was up in that fifth silo before we went down there to work on them freestalls. She's a dusty sucker. So if you notice me getting looking a little white, that's because I I let it down a couple doors and peeled a little bit off the wall because that silo is a little bit out of round and it keeps some a little spot on that northeast corner of that silo and it's kind of a pain in the butt but anyway i think we're gonna that's just the second year third year in a row we've done work down there at the dry cow lot i don't get down there to do as much repair as i usually do as i do up here because i'm up this is the big girls uh the milk cows but down there every time lance is home on a spring break i feel like we we always do do maintenance down there but that's so important because if you don't keep up on that once you know consistently may not every day but most days this whole place will come down on you that's just how it is they're so big they're bad they'll, they'll bend and break anything you got around here so constantly picking up after them in that this beginning of april right right real close very end of march beginning of april we're about two months out from chopping hay so that's april may and usually memorial weekend may 31st we're putting hay up so 
I'm gonna show you how much is in this four silo. I can actually take that door out, but that corn silage, that's two thirds full. This haylage silo on the other side of this wall has got 10 feet in it. So I think we're gonna be good there. And on the, over here, this second silo- 15 foot in it, I was just in it. Uh, and that's that's quite a bit for to have two months. I mean, it'll still be done. Now, there's your first silo I'm pointing at. That's got about 10 to 12 feet of corn silage in it, and that's going to go quick too. Um, you know, your high moisture grain. Um, I think I misspoke there. I said corn silage. That, that high moisture grain's got about 60% in it, and this is another corn silage. She's extremely low. That's that's like two and a half, three foot. I'm gonna probably be this week be getting that wagon around. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to do some more pair work to it a little bit. And I'll start feeding out of that uh out of that egg bag because this bunk will be out. I got that on warp speed. That's how them unloaders look and work. That's a Van Dale and uh uh feeders are off. Here's a look at the cows lined up there. They're doing pretty well. I ended up stopping home. The wife was in a bedroom painting, uh, painting it off-white. It was, look at the color of that. It was like green. She just couldn't take it no more. So she just was cooped up coming off of that, that wisdom tooth removal. And she had to just do something. And so she's back to her old self, finally eating and uh, painting. So... Now we're in the heifer barns. These are them big pole barns we built for heifers. These are 60 by 80s. See, that's a nice cement curb railing. We just did that last year. It was just, um, you know, telephone poles. There's my house right there. I'm just right behind the behind them barns. But it was getting, it's later in the day, and it's damp, and it was wet. So I'm shutting that, them back, them back roll-ups up, and I'm going to get ready to feed these guys hay. I always feed the heifers hay first and then uh then i'll go in there and feed the big cows we're firing that up we're going to check over this another barn 60 by 80 they need their hay and uh here here's see them water tanks you have to shut this roll up door Th those doors on that north end were great for ventilation in the summer you know even on a decently sun sunny day it gets wind blowing but the milk tanks dad bought a bunch of them at, at uh at an auction those are old milk tanks uh, flat tops and they work great for for uh for water because they don't really freeze they're stainless and uh and i just bust up a little bit of hay bale in there and we've been feeding them corn silage once or twice a week out of an ag bag if it were to get you know while it was on a cold morning but it's it's been it's starting to warm up now so then i go to the one barn i go to the next barn and I didn't, I, I got out of there and I'm already, and I got the tire scraper, I'm rolling right in to the main barnyard. Now you see this silo here, that's the original cement silo. Um, Dad ended up adding on the freestall barn, another short section, tucked it in right next to it, left a gap, and it was a perfect size gap because that's a seven foot tire scraper. Uh, that I had bought we got with the skid steer and it fits and squeezes right in there perfectly and you go right along down this is that L section and uh, I always go down one end one shot that's my routine and then I'll stop and I'll turn the feeders on and that's that's the nice part about this silo setup that a lot of people don't talk about is see if you see the feeds dropping in right now um, you can scrape your barnyards and feed at the same time. You just got to pay attention. I do it every day, all day. But this is me scraping out. Feeders running. That's Lonnie walking by in warp speed. He was taking care of a cow, giving her some fresh feed out of that bunk. He's taking it to a maternity pen with water. But that's how I scrape it. I squeegee scrape it twice a day. And there's one of them other flat top water tanks right there. You, you don't find them as much as you used to, but, but you know, say 10, 15 years ago, maybe even 20, Dad was just buying up every one he could find. And, and it's been, uh, shoot, we've got three, four, five, six of them. I'm shutting them doors up, letting silos down. Uh, it was going to get a little breezy that night. That's your corn silage. And then we move all the way down to the end of that grain. Like I said, that grain's probably, that's the one that has a little stuff on the wall build up. That's probably 60%, so... 
we never seem to run out of grain. See that bunk's about half full? I'll flip that and, um, and then we'll have the full other bunk to fill up too. But a, a lot of maintenance. But this is this is feeding equipment. We know it, you know, we know it well. So we you just gotta keep up. These are two long sections I'm in that back up to the the uh, holding area to the milking pen and I'm scraping them out uh, I think there's about 120 free stalls in this barn alone and then there's probably over 50 in this L and that L would be off to my right in this picture right now there's a big L section so plenty of free stalls now that we've cut the cow numbers down seeming to be plenty of feed and you see that round bell ring there as I'm squeegeeing I gave them a free choice round bale, and they've been lasting about one bale uh, two days. And you see the wetness. I'm out of the barnyard, and I'm going to park this skid steer right across from these silos. Uh, she's muddy. She's wet. We need to get that wind to kick up and it quit raining. Park her right in front of this classic 4020. But yeah, she she's she's muddy. She's a muddy mess, but it happens. You know, it happens every every year. We're switched over. How you doing, buddy? These cows you're seeing have already been in to get milk. And they're eating some of that fresh feed to power back up for morning. I'll show you the cows that are locked in here in a second, but these are your main girls here. Loving it. Shut these doors up. Here's the cows getting ready. Yeah, you see, that's the holding area. You see the room I have in there? After cutting that 50 cow down roughly, you know, we'll say 30 to 40 to 50, I've got room. They're not overcrowded. There's our young bull relaxing, hanging out, not wasting his energy by getting mixed in with the cows. And then I'm home. Uh, going down to 20 that night, I fill that wood stove up every night. It keeps that house very warm. Getting low on wood, but it's, it's spring. Hey guys, and that's that's the video. Uh, today is Easter. Happy Easter. I hope everybody had a great day with their family, their loved ones, their friends, whoever you're you're with. I just got back from Rochelle's family down in Lake Orion, Michigan. If you're familiar with that area, it's a pretty nice area. We're a lot north of that, but uh, hung out. Her grandparents were there, you know, and I think he's 85. Uh, grandma and grandpa about 85, so they're they're great people. And now I'm home. We're going to put the, the young kids to bed and uh, just relax. I'll be milking in the morning. Uh, sorry about this video. I hope you like the voice voiceover. I've upgraded equipment since then, so you're going to see some better videos with me uh, me actually talking in them but it, it happens it's never ending whether it be this or the farm or, or so we've got a lot of things going on next week we got the vet coming we've got a bunch of cows i gotta get checked and i got the hoof trimmer coming the following week and i've got some other little surprises that that i'm going to show you so take care hope you had a happy easter um see you next video god bless